In this video, we are going to discuss the mole. And what we're going to do is we're going to answer three main questions. What is the mole and why do we use it? How do you determine the molar mass of a compound? And what's the relationship between moles, mass, and particles? Now, I've had some people ask already, why are we using the mole? What's the purpose of it? Well, in order to do more of the complicated calculations that deal with chemical reactions, like how much reactant do you need in order for a reaction to occur, we need to know how to use the mole, how to convert between moles and grams, how to go from moles to atoms. So the conversions are very important. So the mole is simply a unit. Um, like in socks, we have pairs, that's two, a dozen is 12. Well, atoms and molecules are so small that we need a unit that represents a very, very large number. And that is the mole. So the mole is a counting word. It's a unit for a very large number of items. And to be specific, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So one mole represents a very, very, very large number of atoms or molecules. So if you want to know just exactly how big a mole is, uh, these two links are actually in the description of the video. You can play around with that and see exactly how big a mole is. There's some fun facts about what happens if you cover the earth in M&Ms or marshmallows. So you can take a look at these two websites in the description of the video. So the next question is how can we determine molar mass? The definition of molar mass is simply the mass of one mole of a substance. And we can think about it like a conversion factor. For every one mole, the mass is blank grams. Every atom on the periodic table, every element, has its own unique molar mass. So in order to figure out molar mass, we use the atomic masses on the periodic table. Atomic mass and molar mass are actually the same, except atomic mass is for just one atom, molar mass is for an entire mole, and the units are actually a little bit different, but for our purposes, we assume that they're the same. So to get the molar mass, you just add up all the masses of the atoms in a compound from the periodic table to get the molar mass. So some examples down here, we have an oxygen atom. We'll look on the periodic table for O and look up the average atomic mass. It's 16. The unit for molar mass is grams per mole. So the next example is O2 gas. Now, we have to take into account these subscripts. So we look up the O, average atomic mass on the periodic table, but we have two O's, so you have to multiply it by two. Therefore, it's 32 grams per mole. And I would say always keep it out to two decimal places when you're calculating molar mass. So then the last example is magnesium nitrate, MgNO32. So in order to calculate the molar mass of this, we have to add up each individual component of this. So in this compound, we have one magnesium. This two on the outside of the parentheses distributes to everything inside of the parentheses. So this two goes to both N and to the O, which means we have one magnesium, we have two Ns, and we have three times two. We have six Os. I always recommend writing it out like this because then you can just plug in the masses from the periodic table. So when we look it up from the periodic table, magnesium is 24.31, nitrogen is 14.01, and oxygen is 16.00. Use your periodic table that you have because it actually rounds it to the two decimal places for you. And then you just add all of these up. So you do 24.31 plus 2 times 14.01 plus 6 times 16, and it's 148.33 grams per mole. So again, units for molar mass are always grams per mole. So what this means down here is that for every one mole of magnesium nitrate, there is 148.33 grams. So now we're going to look at the relationship between moles, mass, and particles. And these are conversion factors that we're going to be using uh, to do conversion problems. So we have mass, we have the mole, and we have atoms or molecules. Notice the mole is always in the middle. You always have to go to the mole in between mass and atoms and molecules. So to go from mass to moles, so grams to moles, we use molar mass uh, because the molar mass is the conversion factor that we use. For one mole of a substance, you have the molar mass in grams. 
So that's actually the conversion factor that we can use. If you want to go between moles and atoms or molecules, we're going to use what's called Avogadro's number. And that is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles equals one mole. So when it comes to doing conversion factors or conversion problems, these two numbers down here are our conversion factors. So we'll take a look at a few examples that you have. The first example is actually number 22 in part E, and it says how many moles are in 3.24 times 10 to the 20th molecules of CO2. So like always, underline your numbers that you have so that way you can figure out what you're given and what you're trying to go to. So we're given molecules, we're trying to go to moles. So up here you have the mass to moles to particles like I showed you on the last slide. So we are starting with molecules. Atoms and molecules is your number of particles. So remember if you're over here, we use Avogadro's number to get to moles. So let's always start with your given. 3.24 times 10 to the 20th molecules. Now remember when we did conversions, we always needed our units to cancel, which means I want molecules on the bottom and moles on the top. Avogadro's number is what lets us go between molecules and moles. Now something for you to remember is just remember that the one always goes with mole. So the one always goes with mole for both of these conversions, whether it's molar mass or Avogadro's number. But since we're trying to get rid of molecules, One's on top, one's on the bottom, and then we're going to end with moles, which is what we want. Now, when you put this in your calculator, remember how we put uh, exponents in our calculator before. You should be doing 3.24e20 divided by 6.022e23, and you get 0 .000538 moles, or if you keep it in scientific notation, 5.38 times 10 to the negative fourth moles. If you need help putting this in your calculator, just make sure that you ask. Now this answer should make sense because this number of molecules up here is less than Avogadro's number. Right? This times 10 to the 20 is less than times 10 to the 23rd, so our answer should be less than one mole, and it is. So example two is number 29 in part E, um, and this is how many grams are in 2.3 moles of carbon. So again, start with your given. You're given 2.3 moles, so we're starting here in the middle. We're trying to go out to grams. Well, if you're going between moles and grams, you're going to use molar mass. And you use the molar mass of whatever substance you're working with, and in this case, it's carbon. So I have moles on the top, which means I need moles to cancel. So I'm going to put moles on the bottom. This is our molar mass. If you look on the periodic table, carbon's molar mass is 12.01 grams per mole which means there are 12.01 grams for every one mole. Remember the one always goes with moles, so I cross out moles, I do 2.3 times 12.01, and I get 27.62 grams. Again, if I'm starting with more than one mole of carbon, I would expect my answer to be greater than the molar mass of carbon. And finally, example three, how many molecules are in 125 grams of water? So I'm trying to get to molecules, I'm starting with grams, which means I'm starting over here, I'm trying to get all the way over to here. You cannot do it in one step, you have to do it in two steps. So you go from grams to moles, and then moles to particles. So let's start with our given, 125 grams. First thing we need to do is go from grams to moles. So I'm going to use molar mass. But I have grams on the top, grams needs to go on the bottom next. So the molar mass goes on the bottom, one mole on top. Again, because I need my grams to cancel. So now I'm at moles. Now I can go out to molecules. And to go from moles to molecules, you use Avogadro's number. So one mole, the moles cancel. For every one mole, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And by the time you multiply everything out, so when you put this in your calculator, you're doing 125 times 6.022 E23, hit the equals, divided by 18.02. You should get 4.18 times 10 to the 24th molecules. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go through all the practice problems in part E. Please ask questions if you have them. If some of these examples didn't make sense, please ask as well.